are full of the assumption that they are superior people. Hmm? We are a superior people. The prevailing mentality. Hey, listen. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I did a lot of world travel. You know who's hated worldwide? And who every person who works in any kind of tourist-oriented business dreads to see coming? Americans. You know why? They're always complaining. They're never satisfied with accommodation. They're never satisfied with the meal. They're never satisfied with the travel. They always have a complaint. They never say thank you. Huh? They are ready to have a fight with anybody who is attempting to serve them around the world. I know we've had people before tell us because we exhibited courtesy, politeness, and consideration that these were our fellow human beings and not our servants, our slaves, talking about workers in such facilities. You cannot be Americans. You are too kind. Huh? Now you don't look at us that way as being kind because you're spoiled rotten. <laughs> but what I'm saying is if you just exhibited common human courtesy, they completely said you could not be an American because in their eyes, in their experience, all Americans were rude, selfish, greedy, and never satisfied. So, are we a special people? Yeah, a bunch of special fools. Huh? Are we superior to all other races, creeds, and um, nationalities? We think we are. Hmm? National pride is at an all-time high, and national inward decay is at an all-time high. And we think we're going to pull ourselves out of it. We think we're going to rally together and do it. Not going to do anything except what? Prove the fact that what we sown we're reaping. Prove the fact that it's right here and we won't even look at it. Prove the fact that, hey, guess what, ancient Israel? We will follow. Why do you think that America is so closely knit to Israel? Because they're the same stubborn, proud fools. Have you thought about that? Yeah. While America thinks they have to worship Israel, what are they worshiping? They're worshiping rebellion. They're worshiping hatred for God. They're worshiping defiance. They're worshiping self-reliance. Oh yeah, Israel's really relying on itself as it begs and begs and beseeches the big old fat cumbersome America to pay for all their folly. Huh? And most of all, what does Israel depict? A nation that would never keep themselves in faithfulness unto God. So, you got one whore begetting another whore. A bigger, fatter, uglier whore. Huh? And no wonder America cleaves to Israel. They're of the same blood. They're of the same darkness. They're of the same iniquity. They're of the same whorish motivation against God. Now come on. Well, you just hurt my pet idol of Israel. <laughs> and you're also wounding my idol of America. What did it say? Huh? Come on. It says... I know Ephraim, and Israel not, is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot and have worshipped idols, and Israel is defiled. Okay. What is the prophet saying? That is the word of the Lord. He's saying, look, you whoremongering, idol-worshipping, betraying tribe, nation, land. I know what you do. Hmm? I know what you do. I know you worship idols. I know you bow to other gods. I know you do all those things you think you hide from me, but your sins are not hidden. And he says, there it is, right in your face, what you've done. And still, you won't even admit it. And you're so weak, you can't stop your sin. But you've got to have it. Just like an addict has got to have it. Got to have it. Can't live without it. Can't think without it. Can't do nothing without it. Hooked, hooked on idolatry, hooked 
on harlotry, hooked on sin. Sound like America? Yes, sir. But the pride of, and self-reliance of Israel testifies before his own face. Therefore shall all Israel, and especially Ephraim, the northern ten tribes, totter and fall in their iniquity and guilt, and Judah shall stumble and fall with them. Then it says, And they shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, inquiring for and requiring him. But they will not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. What does it say? It says he has withdrawn himself. Oh, I know that the Lord will never leave nor forsake America because we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. And our forefathers paid a dear price to see this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful nation remain in the hands of God forever. And I know that all we have to do is say, give me God. And he runs like Sandy with his bag on his back to give us whatever we want and whatever we need. God will never forsake America. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, inquiring for and requiring Him. But they will not find Him, for He has withdrawn Himself from them. Hey, I was just saying, you know, before I came on the air, I saw this photo. It was of something that was got off the internet but it was these two military guys in their camouflage go clothes and they were all looking sober and bent over like they were praying or in deep thought and they had gone to beg the pentagon to reconsider the increasing lack of religious freedom that is being extended to our troops our dupes who are fighting these bloody senseless, greed-driven, lust-motivated wars. Hmm? They're there begging reconsideration. So, why are they begging men instead of God? Because he has withdrawn himself from them. They got oceans of blood on their hands defending America against these horrifying foes that are 10,000 miles away that are just waiting to bomb America with a little suitcase bomb that could devastate the entire nation. Duh. You know what America does? She builds up enemies in her imagination. She demonizes whoever she chooses to demonize in order to justify her own lust for blood and for power and for riches. Hmm? And you poor, poor, pathetic dupes who have fallen for the military machine's propaganda and given yourself over to be a murderer, given yourself over to have blood running from your hands in the spirit because of the souls you put to death for the sake of greed, for the sake of lust, for the sake of murder. I feel sorry for you because you're there begging for your religious rights and your God has departed. Hmm? People, we don't have to beg men. We need to beg God. We need to cry out unto God. We need to pray all night unto God. We need to fast and pray and consecrate ourselves unto God because it is God that raises nations up and pulls nations down. Hmm? And it's God that forsakes and withdraws himself. They have dealt faithlessly and treacherously with the Lord, their espoused husband, for they have born alien children. Now shall a single new moon one month devour them with their fields. Blow the horn in Gebeah and the trumpet in Ramah, both lofty hills on Benjamin's northern border. Sound the alarm at Beth Haven. The enemy is behind you and after you, O Benjamin, be on your guard. Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of rebuke and punishment. 
Among the tribes of Israel I declare what shall surely be. The princes of Judah are like those who remove the landmark, the barrier between right and wrong. I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. What's the next deception? None of these disasters are of God. That's what the big boys are saying. We're going to turn now to what's being called biblical flooding across Colorado. Residents said they've never seen anything like it. The image is just shocking. Homes up to their roofs with water. Rescuers using canoes to get people to safety as rivers rage with roads ripped out. And there's no end to this misery in sight. ABC News meteorologist Ginger Z is right in the middle of it in Boulder. Good morning, Ginger. Stranded and submerged. The Colorado landscape washing away as rescuers race to those trapped by rising waters. It's like the ocean out here. Dozens of homes, entire neighborhoods, up to their roofs in that murky runoff. Within one hour, it completely surrounded the entire house, and we had current. Some caught riding it out. Others plowing through the historic floods in pickup trucks. In Weld County, farms isolated on islands. Never, ever has this water been this high. I've got three horses. I hope they're alive. We had to get out so quick. And look at those abandoned mobile homes, congested, toppled by the devastating waters. In Estes Park, this dramatic video of a woman desperately holding on as rescue workers zipline her to safety. And from inside this fire truck, the floodwaters bubbling over the windshield. Thousands evacuated from their homes, four dead, and more than 180 now unaccounted for. President Obama declaring a state of emergency Friday. And it's not just Colorado. Parts of New Mexico are getting up to four inches of rain an hour at times. At least 25 homes evacuated. Countless roads impassable. The remorseless waters devouring highways. Homes crumbling in the force. A full weekend forecast of more rain. This is not a good situation, and it is not over. The danger is still in place here. People have to be on alert. The National Guard is on the scene. They're using choppers to fly people out of towns that have essentially been cut off from the rest of the world. We're also hearing from a man who got trapped <laughs> after his car was flipped over by a wall of water. His rescue, as you can see right here, caught on camera. And ABC Clayton Sandell is also in the flood zone this morning. Unimaginable loss. Three last miracle. <laughs> Thousands of Colorado residents forced from their homes. The National Guard airlifting nearly 300 out of the stranded community of Jamestown. Oh my God! Reuniting them with loved ones, still shaken by all they've seen. Nobody would ever imagine anything like this. The devastation over there is immense. It's like everything you know and love that you just see gets swept away in a matter of hours. The neighbor's house fell off into what was a little creek. It's now raising a river. It fell off and got swept away. Gone. Gone. There's no other word but s -buff. I've never ever seen anything like this. The word on many minds, survival. Something Roy Ortiz knows all too well. This is the underside of Ortiz Pontiac Grand Prix. Flung into the rapids Thursday while on his way to work. Flash floods tearing away the road beneath him. For two hours, the father of four was trapped and quickly sinking. Here comes the big stuff. stuff. Hey, this is, I want to survive. I feel really good thanks to the guy and my family. Don't worry. Samaritan's Purse will be there to give you your little toothbrush, your little wash rag, and your one eightieth of an ounce of soap. And you can feel clean and tidy in your diety when you don't have a house, when you don't have a car, when you don't have a job, and everything you've worked and labored for is in ruination. God doesn't do those things. God would never cause his people to suffer. God would never bring his wrath upon them. God would never bring vengeance through the form of natural disaster upon the rebellious, the hateful, the, the wayfaring people that have turned aside from him because God doesn't want his people to suffer. Lying puppets, demon-infused deceivers, 
dog-faced fools, greedy for gain, devouring souls. What does it say? Oh my gosh, what does it say? Now shall a single new moon one month de devour them in their fields. Blow the horn in Gebeah, the trumpet in Ramah, both lofty hills on Benjamin's northern border. Sound the alarm at, Benjamin, at Beth Haven. The enemy is behind you and after you. O Benjamin, be on your guard. Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of rebuke and punishment. Among the tribes Israel, I declare what shall surely be. The princes of Judah are like those who remove the landmark, the barrier between right and wrong. So what have these modern preachers done in America? They remove the barrier between right and wrong. They remove it. They remove the very barrier that kept God's people in the right way. Huh? That even kept the world and the sinners in check because there was a barrier between right and wrong. Now it's been pulled down. It's been devastated. It's been taken away. And all of them are going around saying, well, I know the Bible says that, but I believe. So what are they? They're the new Christ. They're the new Messiah. They're saying, come follow me, and I'll lead you into the same damn ditch I'm in. Come follow me, and I'll take you down to utter ruination morally and economically and every other way. False Christ, princes, removing the barriers. Hmm? And then what does it say? Between right and wrong, and I, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Huh? Who's saying that they're going to pour out their wrath? Who is it? Is it the president of Russia? Huh? We don't fear China anymore. Now we're getting back into bomb shelters and Russians are coming. Huh? Sorry, honey, worse than the Russians is already here. Okay, so what is it saying? It's saying God is the one who's going to pour out his wrath like water. So for those of you who have taken the falsehood, the delusion, the confusion of the false and lying messengers and believe God isn't doing any of these things, i got news for you. God is doing all of these things. And where's our pride? Where's our self-reliance? In defense against God. I speak unto thee this day, and I say during the time, the duration of your lives upon this earth, so far I say this is what has transpired before me. I say that I offered unto my people abundance of mercy and truth, abundance of light, and I say that I even gave them the spirit to guide them in the same. Then I say that I led them to the warfare, they refused to do the battle, and what did they do? I say they refused to fight the good fight, instead they chose to give themselves to foolishness, to folly. Now I say they have been conquered by the enemies. That is, they have been taken into captivity and slavery and bondage, and I say they are there because they were the ones who chose that way. That is, they chose the way of their own defeat, they chose the way of their own captivity and slavery, and I say it was because they refused to fight the good fight. I say because they chose as their way that of foolishness and folly, I say now they are ruled by the very forces of darkness they once sought to escape. And I say they are ruled in cruelty and oppression and bondage, but I say they have brought it to themselves. Now I say in this wicked generation that those who are bound in the foolishness, the folly that they've chosen, who have become the captive slaves of the various powers of darkness, I say they are under my wrath. So not only are they ruled by demons, but I say they have angered me. And I say it is because of their choices to oppose me, their choices of pride and reliance upon their own understanding. That is, they have looked to the arm of flesh of their own carnal reasoning rather than looking to me. And I say they rejected the mind of my spirit, they rejected obedience unto me, and I say they have chosen the way of fools. 
Now I say they are bound in that way. I say they are under the wrath continually. And I say it is all of their own choices. For I say when a man will choose in opposition to me, I say that he's choosing the course of his own despair. And I say when a woman will choose in opposition to me, I say she's choosing her cup of sorrows. Now I say this day there are multitudes who are in such a condition because they refuse to fight. That is, they refuse to do war against the enemies that were waiting to beset, overwhelm, and devour them. Instead, they fell into the arms of the saints. That is, they allowed themselves to be tricked, to be deceived, to be led astray from me. And I say they allowed themselves to be taken down a road of emptiness, futility, and despair. Now I say that I, the living God, never ever intended that my own people would be taken in the way of emptiness, futility, and despair. But I say that I've intended that they would come forth in me. That is, I've intended that my people would be ever uplifted, directed, and guided in the truth, the light, the mercy that I provide. And I say that I've intended that the ones who would be choosing me would not be losing out with me. But I say that the ones who chose the way of fools will pay for the same. Now I say when you look upon the degradation, when you look upon the demoralization, when you look upon the utter distress that men are in, why is it so? I say it is because there are those who rejected, who refused to fight for me. That is, they refused to stand valiant for the truth, to declare and do war against enemy forces, but I say they buckled under the same. And I say they threw themselves into foolishness and folly and declared that it was of me. But I say in all of their foolery and all of their vanity and all of their stupidity and darkness, I say they have brought forth nothing but the wind. That is, they have not brought forth anything that is serious nor sober for me. But I say they have brought forth stupidity and increasing darkness, and oh, they have loved it so. For I say they are as drunkards, intoxicated on their pride, intoxicated on their self-reliance and determination to have their way. Now I say when you look upon the spiritual condition that the nation is, is in, I say it is utterly decrepit before me. And I say that it is in such a shape because men have chosen to oppose me to have their own way. That is, they have chosen to put themselves in the way of foolishness, the way of vanity, the way of pride. And I say for all of their flaunting of their so-called independence from me, I say they have become the captive slaves of sin. And I say they have been taken into bondage, oppression, and darkness, and I say that is where they remain. Now I say it is me, the living God, who does not withhold my wrath from them because they are worthy of the same. That is, because they chose the way of their own understanding above the mind of my spirit and they would not be subject unto me. I say when men and women will insist and persist in having their own independence, their own way, what do they do? I say they take themselves into the entanglement of their own debauchery and drunkenness, and yes, they are loving it so. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to walk with fools who are ever persistent and insistent in their folly. But I say that I call thee to walk with the upright to be coming forth in me. And I say that I call thee to be made glad, ever thankful, that it is me that you can continue to believe, to trust, and obey. For I say, when it is me, the living God, that you seek to please, you will walk uprightly in me. But I say, if you are living for yourself, promoting yourself, then I say you will be as the fools who are bound in follow. Now I say this day that I, the living God, am reaching out once again to the sons of men and all who will respond to me and obey me will be guided by me. For I say it is me, the living God, who will indeed teach another generation to fight the good fight of faith. And I say if they will indeed hearken unto me and obey, 
despite the darkness of the times, they will be brought forth in my way. And I say it is me, the living God, who will give to them the victory that the other generation was meant to gain. But I say, because men are so stubborn, so proud, so dependent upon themselves rather than me, I say they do not receive my call. But I say, because I am the God of faithfulness and mercy, I say that I give the call to any generation that will listen to me. And I say, if the generation will reject me, I say that the call still goes forth to those who will individually choose for me. For I say that I, the living God, will pull forth out of the midst of the mess of people who will walk uprightly in me. And I say that I will show by that demonstration that I am indeed the Almighty under those who believe. Now I say this day, be thankful that I, the living God, have pulled thee out of the mess and brought thee unto me. That is, that I've given thee the privilege to walk uprightly, to come forth in the truth of light that I provide. And I say, be thankful that I purpose thee to be directed, corrected, and instructed always. And I say, be thankful that I am the one who is truth and light, strength and hope, and the peace intended for thee. Now I say this day, be quick to be accepting, be quick to be walking uprightly, be quick to be thankful unto me. For I say it is indeed me, the living God, who does purpose thee, that you can be kept always. And it is me, the living God, who does purpose thee, that you can be ever strengthened in that which I give, which is my truth and the light upon the path. For I say, if it is me that you look to in faith and trust, if it is me that you believe in and obey, you are ever guided in my way. But I say, if you are choosing the way of darkness, the way of evil, and not walking circumspectly before me because you desire to behave as a fool, I say, you receive the fool's reward. Now I say this day that I, the living God, am not mocked, and men do not get by on me. But I say, whatsoever it is that men choose to walk in, I say, the same will prove to be death unto them. That is, if they choose a way that is far from me, if they choose the way of foolishness and folly, I say, they are choosing the course of their own destruction, their own despair. But I say, if they will choose to walk uprightly coming forth in me, I say, they are ever guided by me. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do offer to thee the truth, the light, the mercy, and the hope of who I am. And I say, if you will be ever thankful for that way, you are ever guided in me. And I say that you can come forth made strong and able to fight the good fight, because it is me you desire to please. But I say, if you prove as a fool to choose foolishness and folly, of course you are made a slave of the same. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do continue to call for those who will hearken unto me, unto the way of my life. And I say that I use thee as my messengers, my vessels, to call men unto me. Therefore I say, do not grow weary, nor be defeated in the same, but I say, be encouraged in me. For I say, it is me, the living God, who will cause to come forth the ones who will genuinely live in me. Now I say, this day be thankful for the privilege I've given unto thee, to live, to abide, to come forth in me. And I say, be thankful that I do persistently give thee the truth as you continue to desire the same. And I say, be thankful that you are not in a ditch and a mire and stuck in a wallow of that filthiness day by day. But I say that you can indeed be walking forth in the truth, the light that I provide, ever thankful to receive of who I am. Now I say this day, do not be as the stupid, the dull, the dumb, who think they can play around with sin and get by. But I say, be as the wise who know, understand, and realize that the wages of sin is death. I say, this day, continue to keep on trusting, and to keep on believing and hoping in me. And I say, let your reliance, your dependency be ever upon me, the one true God who is caring for thee. And I say, if it is me that you will continue to look to, to trust, to believe and obey, you are ever guided in my way. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not 
give mercy to the man who continues as a fool when he's been given the way that is my life. And I say that I do not have pity upon the ones who continue in their folly, their stupidity and darkness when they could have walked uprightly in me. But I say it is me, the living God, who will show my love, my compassion, my mercy unto the ones who will walk uprightly in me. That is, the ones who will seek to please me in all that they do, not looking for any other way. For I say, when you will refuse the mind of my spirit to take up the mind of your own carnality, you are taking up the very mind of death. Now I say, this day when a man will reason himself out of obedience unto me, what is it that he does? I say that he takes himself in a way that is futility and darkness, a way that is emptiness and very remains. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to darkness, to futility, to emptiness, but I say that I call thee to the abundance of light and life that I provide. And I say that I call thee to be thankful that you can indeed be uplifted, directed, and guided forth by me. Now I say in this wicked, vile, corrupted, and evil generation, consider that I, the living God, am the one ever present to give to thee the multiplied mercy. And I say, consider likewise that I am the one ever present to direct thee, correct thee, and guide thee forth in the truth that I provide. For I say, if you truly consider what it is that I do for thee, I say that I give thee unlimited mercy. And I say, if you truly consider what it is that I provide, I say it is the way of abundant life. I say, therefore, this day be glad for the privilege to continue, the privilege to walk uprightly, the privilege to be ever kept in me. And I say, do not be murmuring and complaining against my authority over thee, but I say, be thankful for the same. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is all righteousness, blessedness, truth, and hope, and the peace provided for thee. And it is me, the living God, who will be ever present to show thee that I am the I am, the one that you are meant to be subject unto. And I say that you will not need to die and perish as the fools who have chosen their folly, but I say that you can continue to fight for the fight of faith and be victorious in